Good evening, everyone. Well, here we are again. I, uh, I'm going to try to give you a word. I've had a... I didn't like the way it, it really kind of developed. I usually like to get confirmation on a word, get everything set up, get everything laid out, and go from there. And I thought, I thought that's where I was Sunday night. I had made a couple of uh, little things for a demonstration. And Monday, I realized that's not what I'm going to speak on. And I, I usually like to have everything laid out, have everything written down, have everything tested. Yeah, I'm not like Charles. I come up here with notes. Charles comes up with a note. And if he forgets that, he just goes right on. So anyway. I was going to speak on peace, but I just couldn't get any peace about it. No. You can believe that or not, but that's that's really that's basically what I was going to speak on, and I had a couple of props made, and I decided, well, is that you, Lord? And uh, so I decided to speak instead on a biblical guide to good health and long life. I mean, looks like we need a little bit of that, you know, so. The only thing is, I had been writing some notes along. See, I, I started this study back a long time ago, but I'd work on it a little bit and put it aside, work on it and put it aside. And all I have is just a list of scriptures, which I don't even have them organized by the right groups that I wanted to do but I felt led that this is what I should speak on. So, uh, why don't we pray and ask the Lord to use these scriptures that I'm going to give in whatever order they're supposed to be, that the Holy Spirit will, will organize them in our minds. Lord, we come to you tonight, we give this service to you, we ask that you would take these scriptures because they are your word. And if I use some scriptures redundantly, allow your Holy Spirit to organize them in our minds. Give us ears to hear. Give us a mind to understand what you want said. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Does God want us to have good health? Does God want us to have a long life? Third John, the second verse, because there are no, there's only one chapter, so there's no chapter divisions. But when the Bible was written, there were no chapters or verses, but man put that in so we could make reference and find them quickly. So, but you can still refer to it as Third John 1, verse 2, or just Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects that you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. I'll be using the New American Standard tonight. But we can see John was writing this letter under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he made it known that, that we should be in good health. Now, as, as I travel through this list of scriptures, and I don't know how much you'll be able to keep up with, Charles, but if not, that's, that's fine. Uh, well, how did God feel about this? How did Jesus feel about it? In the King James Version of 
Isaiah 53, 5. And it's talking about Jesus. It's talking about the Messiah that would come. And we know that that is Jesus. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now see, in Isaiah it says, we are healed. Peter quotes that scripture, and he says, for by his wounds, or the King James says stripes, you were healed. So see, it's past tense. We are already healed. When Isaiah wrote it, he was looking into the future. When Peter wrote it, he was speaking of the past. It's already happened. It must have been pretty important to God. It must have been pretty important to Jesus to go through all of that, that we might have healing. I mean, if you've seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, he was beaten to where he wasn't even recognizable as a man. So, I believe that, that God really wants us to be healed. Jesus really wants us to be healed to the point of giving up his body as, as a human sacrifice. And his death was for the atonement of our sins, but the beating that he took was for our healing. What are some things that affect our health or longevity? Which of these things can we change? Which of them can we not change? James 5, 14 through 16 says, and again I'm in the New American Standard, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will raise him up, and if he's committed any sin, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sin, your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Hebrews 9, 27 says, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after that comes the judgment. When God created the earth, he knew every person that would ever live on the earth. He knew when you would be born. He knew when you would die. It says that it's appointed for man to die. It doesn't say when the appointment is. But it's pretty much guaranteed, except for the ones that go in the rapture, that death is inevitable. Out of all of the people that have ever lived on the earth that have passed on, it's just under 100%. Now, the reason it's just under 100% is because uh, Enoch was raptured and Elijah was raptured. And both of those are types and shadow, shadows of the, the church being raptured. Now, can, can we change when that day is? You know, there's, there's one denomination that preaches that when you're born, there is a certain time, and you will die at that certain time, and there's nothing you can do to make that time come sooner or make it come later. I don't believe that. And I'll base that on the Scriptures. Now, Psalms 90, verse 10 says, 
As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years. Or if due to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow. And soon it is gone and we fly away. Originally, the original prototypes for human beings, Adam and Eve, were, were designed to live forever. Every seven years, every single cell in your body is replaced. And this was to go on for eternity. But the manufacturer's warranty was voided because of sin. Two verses down, Psalms 90, verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we might present to thee a heart of wisdom. God wants us to realize that because, because of sin, because of one man, sin entered into the world, and through sin, death entered in. That was not God's will, but he created man with a choice, and man made the wrong choice. But he, he made provision from that by one man coming and dying on the cross, that man, Jesus Christ. Should the Lord tarry, and if it's the Lord's will, Pastor Bob will be 80 in March. Shows he's, he's had strength. Likewise, if the Lord tarries, and if it's God's will, Linda's mother will be 90 in September. My mother will be 90 in, uh, in October. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2 says, There's an appointed time for everything. There's a time for every event under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. And you American standard says a time to give birth. So we have a time to, to be born and a time to die. Does the scripture say we can make that a longer time? Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for it is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that you may live long on the earth. So if there is a promise that you obey your parents, that you'll live long on the earth, if you don't obey your parents, does that mean you'll live a shorter time? That's what it seems to say. There's a promise that if you obey your parents, then you'll live a long time. Proverbs eleven nineteen says, He who is steadfast in righteousness will attain to life. And he who pursues evil will bring about his own death. You can bring about your own death. You can open your mouth. You can put a shotgun in there. You can pull the trigger. You can't blame God for that. That wasn't God's appointed time for you to go. Now the ones that preach that, that you have an appointed time to be born and an appointed time to die, well, then that was your appointment and you just got in that state of mind so you would do that. No. You lay down in front of a train and the train runs over you. That's not necessarily your appointed time. But I stopped trying to convince people of that. If, if that's what people believe, then that's what they believe. But what does the Word of God say? Let's don't base it on what somebody taught us. Let's base it on what the Word of God says. And that's what Paul liked about the Bereans because everything he told them, they went home and they searched the Scriptures to see if these things were so. And that's what we do at this church. We encourage people, when you hear something spoken from the pulpit, go home and examine the Scriptures and see if it lines up with them. 
Or read the scriptures every day, and when you hear it spoken, you'll be able to automatically know if it lines up. Proverbs 3, 1 through 3. My son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life, and peace they will add to you. Proverbs 4.10 says, My son, accept my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. Now this scripture that was quoted in Ephesians uh, 6, 1 through 3, you know, it, it's a quotation from, uh, it's taken from the Ten Commandments, which is in Exodus 20, verse 6, and Deuteronomy 30, verse 16. All right, let's, let's look at Ecclesiastes 7, 17. Do not be excessively wicked, and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? Now, are you going to believe a doctrine taught in a denomination? Or are you going to believe what the Word says? The Word says that you can die before your time. You have an appointment, but you, you might check out before that appointment comes. You know, if you have a toothache, you can make an appointment with the dentist, but that thing can get hurting so bad, you go down and sit in his office and say, you got to work me in today. I, I got an appointment next week, but I can't, I can't wait till next week. In uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 26 through 30, it's, it's talking about the Lord's Supper. It's talking about eating it in an unworthy manner. And, and Paul says, For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you sleep. Now that word sleep actually means dead. And there are some other scriptures that, that can verify that. In Acts 7, 60, Stephen fell asleep. They stoned him. He was dead. He was dead. It's, uh, many times the scripture talks about sleep, but it's actually talking about death. Jesus himself said in John 11:11, 11, 11, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. The disciples thought, well, he's getting better because he's sleeping. Sleep is a good remedy for sickness because when you sleep, when you rest, it gives your body a chance to to catch up. But Jesus wasn't talking about that type of sleep. Finally, he told them, no, I'm speaking literally of his death. Choices you make can have an outcome on, on your health, on the length of your life. We're, we're promised a certain amount, but if we don't, you know, it, it's just like a warranty on a car. If you if you got a car and it's warrantied for so long and you run it into a wall, then all of a sudden the warranty isn't any good. You know, if you if you buy if you buy a Volkswagen and a 65 foot yacht and you try to pull that 65 foot yacht with that Volkswagen, they're not going to they're not going to honor the, the the warranty on the transmission. Anyway, some of this sitting in my notes, as you can tell. <laughs> it's the water. That's what it is. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health 
to all their whole body. He's talking about pay attention to his words. Well, if that's the words of a man, how much more will the word of God provide for us help? You know, Jesus said that he was the word. And the word, if you read the word, which is written about the word, then it will bring health to your whole body. Proverbs 20, verse 7. The fear, and this word fear means reverence. The fear of the Lord prolongs life. The years of the wicked will be shortened. You can shorten your life by being wicked. You have some control, you have some input as to whether you live a long life. Now, I know there are situations where, where things happen and you have no control over them. When my brother was four years old, two days away from his fifth birthday, he was in a vehicle with my father. My father apparently had a heart attack and ran off the road and ran into a tree. My brother was killed in that, in that accident. The only choice he had in that, man, in, that, in that whole situation was the fact that at one point we were all in the car before my father went on the trip. But for some reason, Mama made us all get out. But my, my brother decided he wanted to go with, with, uh, with our dad. And the strange thing is, he was always a mama's boy. He wanted to be where mama was. But that one time, he made a choice that he wanted to go with, with, with our dad. And he was there in that situation. And I don't believe that his time would have been up at five years old. Now, you know, we all have questions. You know, but when we get to heaven, I don't think that'll be, you know, something that we'll even be concerned about. We'll be so full of joy to be in the presence of God that many of the questions we have now, you know, we won't even we won't even consider. But we can make choices that have a bearing on on our life, that have a bearing on our health, that have a bearing on other people's lives. People that are around us. An example of that is Proverbs 12, 4 says, An excellent wife is a crown to her husband, but she who shames him is rottenness in his bones. So we can affect other people. And I, I, got, I got some other... Uh, information about rottenness to the bones in, in a little bit. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't go back and, and organize these. That probably would have been a job itself, just getting them all in one, uh, the different categories. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. And verse 8 says, It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Now, I have a lot of scriptures here that refer to healing in your bones. Why is it so important for your bones to be healthy? In the center of your bone is marrow. Mara produces the blood that flows through every part of your body. Anything that doesn't receive blood will die. You cut the blood off in your finger, and eventually it, it will die. So whatever affects the bones affects the whole body. If you get, if you get your bones healed, then, then there will be healing that flows throughout your whole body. Now, the whole secret to, to good health 
is balance. You have to eat right. You have to have plenty of sleep. You have to have exercise. This is true for the physical body and for the spirit. Deuteronomy 3.8 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding, for, it is, for its profit is better than the profit of silver and its gain than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire compares with her. 16. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all those who hold her fast. Now, you know, when you jump on down to the verse 21 through 26, Solomon says, My son, let them not depart from your sight. Now, what is them? In verse 19 and 20, it's talking about wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and, and discretion. They will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. And when you walk in your way, then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. And when you lie down, you will not be afraid. And when you lie down, your, your sleep will be sweet. We have to have that amount of sleep that the body requires to maintain that system. You have to eat right, you have to sleep. 1 Timothy 4, 8 says, For bodily discipline, and the King James says exercise, is only of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds the promise for the present life and for the life to come. You have to exercise your spirit man. The things that you learn from the Word, it's like faith. You have to exercise faith in order for it to grow. You have to exercise your muscles in order for them to grow. Proverbs 12, 18. We can affect ourselves, we can affect people around us by what we say. Proverbs 12, 18. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And of course, we all know this scripture, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from trouble. And James 3.8 says that no one can tame the tongue. It, it, is ruth, it is a ruthless evil and full of deadly poison. With the same tongue we, we bless God and we curse men who are made in the image of God. And brethren, these things shouldn't be. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, anxiety. We can, we can affect our own health by anxiety. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. So if we have anxiety, we can overcome that with a good word. A good word from our own mouth, a good word from somebody else's mouth. If you see a person that's anxious, you might be able to bring healing to them by speaking a good word. 
Matthew 6, 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life, as for what you shall eat or what you shall drink, or for your body as to what you shall put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. And what's that scripture? It says the kingdom of God is not food, but peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And Jesus continues in Matthew 6, 33 through 34. I know Rick knows this one. But seek, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow has, will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Proverbs 13 1 through 3, a wise son accepts his father's discipline, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. From the fruit of a man's mouth, he enjoys good, but the desires of the treacherous is violence. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life, and the one who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. So see, we can affect our health, the health of others, by one member of our body, the tongue. Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And verse 14 says, the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life to turn aside from the snare of death. Proverbs 13, verse uh, 17. A wicked messenger falls into adversity, but a faithful envoy brings healing. It's just something about receiving a good word. That's why Pastor Bob likes to take the scripture sheets and read those before a service because he hears a good word. It's a word coming from the Lord. If you want a word from the Lord, just open your Bible. He speaks through his word. Now, you can't just randomly open it and read because, you know, sometimes you might not be in the right place. But if you let the Lord lead you where you should read, then he will speak to you. Proverbs 14, 30. A tranquil heart is life to the body. And what's the, what's the opposite of a tranquil heart? Anxiety. So a tranquil heart is life to the body. But passion... And the King James says envy is rottenness to the bone. Now we remember we read in uh, Proverbs 12, 4 that a shameful wife is rottenness to the bone. Well now, wait a minute, how can, how can both of these be true? Well, this rottenness to the bone, Henry Wright says that's osteoporosis. It's like it's like this. When you have a fever, that usually indicates that there's infection in your body. Well, you know, there's more than one way to get infection in your body. This, this rottenness of the bone, that, that would be like the fever. You know, there could be many sources to get that fever. You could go to the hospital and get staph infection. You could be at home and and cut yourself and your finger get infected from that. You could step on a nail and get, get an infection. There's a lot of ways to get the infection. There's a lot of ways to get rottenness in the bone. It could be from envy. It could be from, in, in the other case, it, it says a, a shameful wife.
All right, Proverbs uh, 15, 4. A soothing tongue is a, a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. Verse, jump down to verse 13. A joyful heart makes a cheerful face, but when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. You know, you can physically get sick in your physical body because of what is happening in your spirit. You can put your body in situations to where you can grieve your spirit, but your spirit can also make, make you physically sick. Proverbs 18, 14 says, The spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but a broken spirit, who can bear? Proverbs 16, 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who watches his way preserves his life. You can preserve your life or you can put your life in jeopardy all by whatever decisions you make, whatever choices you make. Understanding is a fountain of life. Proverbs uh, 16, 22. Understanding is a fountain of life to, hi to him who has it. But the dis discipline of fools is folly. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. It's, it's very, you know, the bones... If we didn't have bones, we'd be like a, a jellyfish. We'd have to be like in water or something, some way to, to get around. Our bones, our skeleton, is the foundation of our human body. It's, it's the support. It, it's how we get around. It's how our organs are placed in a, in a protective cage inside of, you know, the, the rib cage and, and things like that. Without the bones... Man would have had to have a different form. Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 17, 22. A joyful heart is a good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. The word has a lot to say about our bones. It's amazing that when Jesus was crucified, not a bone was broken. He had to be the perfect sacrifice. And that was, that was a requirement even back in the Old Testament when they, when they sacrificed the sheep. He had to be without spot, spot or blemish. And he had to have no broken bones. All right, uh, Proverbs, and, and I think I've, I've shared this before, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are safe. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. Now, anything I'm repeating, it must be something we need to hear the second time. I say we because I need every bit of this. All I have to do is just look at this for myself and, you know, if... If it applies to you, fine, but I know it applies to me. 
Proverbs 25, 15. By forbearance, a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue breaks the bone. That's amazing. Proverbs 28, 16. A leader who is a great oppressor lacks understanding, but he who hates unjust gain will prolong his days. That's it. To me, this tells me I can, I can make my days longer or I can cut them shorter simply by the choices I make. A lot of it has to do with, with what we think about, what we say, what we do. Proverbs 23, 7, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. So what should we think on? Philippians 4, verse 8, Whatever's lovely, true, just, pure, think on these things. And I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about anger. The, the dictionary says anger, a feeling of great displeasure or hostility towards someone or something caused by a sense of injury or wrong, rage, wrath. I know you all don't have any problems with that, but like I said, I'm just... I'm speaking to myself here, and so, uh, you know, y'all can li feel free to listen in. But You know, we should av avoid anger. Did you know that extreme anger can shut down the immune system? And what happens when the immune system's shut down? Just think if you, if you have prolonged anger, The Bible says in Ephesians 4.26, Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, don't stew all night long. Because when you stew all night long, you become the stew. Now you all tell me. Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Verse 4 says, a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perversion in it crushes the spirit. You know, you can crush somebody's spirit. It says you can break their bones. You can crush their spirit with a word. That old, that old child's fable, sticks and stones may break my bones, that's a lie. That is not true. Proverbs 15, 18. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but the slow to anger pacifies contention. Verse 23. A man has joy in an apt answer, and how delightful is a timely word. 26. Evil plans are an abomination to the Lord, but pleasant words are pure. 28. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. Rosemary has a, a, a booklet in the back, and it's called The Power of Anger. It's, it's in booklet form, and it's, uh, it's very easy reading. And if you know somebody that needs that, feel free to get one and, and pass it out. Now, I'm going to give you a, a scripture for, for anger management and for deliverance. Anger management, Ephesians, we just read it, Ephesians 4, 26, be angry and sin not. Right? That's, that's anger management. But deliverance, Matthew 
uh, 3.10 says put the axe to the root. It's a lot better to get rid of the problem than to just manage it. Proverbs, uh, Hebrews 12.15 See to it that no one comes short of the grace of God, that no root of bitterness spring up causing trouble and by it defile many. We can defile many with, with anger, with bitterness, with envy, with pride. All of these emotions, if they get out of hand, they can defile many. And plus, if the root's not dealt with, we can pass them on. In Genesis uh, 49, 5 through 7, Jacob was, was uh, prophesying over all of his children. And when he got to, to Simeon and, and Levi, he said, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Because of their anger, they slew men. In verse 7, he says, cursed be their anger. Well, guess what? Moses was a descendant of Levi, and Moses had an anger problem. God told him to speak to the rock, God told him the first time, strike the rock, and then he said, speak to the rock, and he struck the rock the second time because of his anger. That kept him out of the promised land. He forfeited his right to go in the promised land because of anger. So if we exercise anger management, that's one thing, but if we put the root to the ax, then that keeps it from going to the next generation. That's not an inheritance you want to pass on to your children. Rejection can cause anger. Anger can be used to control other people. An insecure or rejected person has to be in control so that no one else can hurt him or her. You know, there's a lot of cases in the Bible about, about uh, anger, about rejection. In Genesis uh, 4, 5, God rejected Cain's uh, offering. Verse 5 says, But for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? Well, Cain and his offering were rejected by God, so Cain felt rejected, and that's why he became angry. So what did he do? He took it out on his brother. He affected somebody else because of, of his anger. And, and God told him in, uh, in verse 7, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? Or surely you will be accepted. And if you do not do well, sin is crouched at the door, and it desires, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. What you don't master will master you. He didn't master his anger, and anger mastered him, and he ended up killing his brother Abel. Proverbs 19.11 A man's discretion makes him slow to anger and it is his glory to overlook transgression. This word discretion, it means the quality of being discreet, prudent, freedom from action or judgment. So the prudent man, the, a, a man's discretion if we have discretion, we'll be slow to anger, we'll be slow to judge. Sometimes we'll be slow to go to an action. See, if, if Cain would have been slow to, to react, he wouldn't have killed his brother.
Well, I, I have some more notes here, but. Let me just uh, read this about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a vital part of the physical emotion. Uh, I'm sorry. It, forgiveness is a vital part of physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive man, men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men, then your Father will not forgive you your trespasses. And then uh, this is kind of just uh, general statements about uh, physical health. It says, fasting can cleanse your body as well as your soul and your spirit. If you're, physical, if you're physically healthy enough and are able to, uh, to fast, then, then it's, it's recommended. Uh, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 16, and whenever you fast, he didn't say if you fast, he says whenever you fast, you know, and he gives you instructions on, uh, on what to do. I'll just, I'll just read these scriptures and, uh, and we'll close. And it says, uh, look at the effects of stress on the human body and mind. Prov and I may have read some of these before, but I'll, I'll close with these. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man weighs it down. Uh, Psalms 46, 10. Cease from striving and know that I am God. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And that's Jesus speaking. Matthew 6, 25. Do not be anxious for your life. Psalms uh, 94, 19. And when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, Thy consolations delight my soul. Psalms 27, 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. John 14, 27. Jesus says, My peace I give to you. And uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are, who, that labor and are heavily, heavily, heavy laden. I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you very much.